So what is the principle of refractive surgery? It is that the corneal curvature is changed. In myopia it is flattened, in hypermetropia it is steepened and in astigmatism both are done. Now let's understand both of these conditions. First let's start with myopia. This is the cornea and the eyeball is too lengthy. So what happens here? The light rays come and they, dive, they converge too much and focus in front of the retina okay that is the pathology of myopia so what we are doing here is we are flattening the cornea the cornea becomes a bit flatter like this so the ray rays they can converge onto the retina that is there is no premature convergence of the rays i hope you are understanding what i'm trying to say the rays go a bit further with the help of some divergence because the cornea is flattened and it focuses on the retina this is how refractive surgeries work in myopia. In hypermetropia, similarly, you steepen a flat cornea so that the image falls on the retina. What happens in hypermetropia? Usually, that the image is focused behind the retina. If you steepen the cornea, what happens is it helps in converging the lights exactly on the retina. And in astigmatism, both of these procedures are done. Now, the most primitive type of uh, uh, care, refractive surgery that was done is a radial keratotomy. Uh, it could correct up to uh, three diopters spherical error of the eye. So, the procedure was, see these, you can see these lines. These cuts were made in 90% depth of the cornea. So, the cornea would get flattened. So mainly you can understand that it was used to correct myopia. See uh, what you can make out from here is you are cutting 90% of the depth of the cornea without measuring the requirement uh, depending on the refractive error of the patient. So it results in unwanted hypermetropia. Right? That is why it is not recommended now. There is excessive flattening of the cornea in this condition. So it results in unwanted hypermetropia. So this procedure is discarded now. Now after this, this was succeeded by our PRK that is photorefractive keratectomy. That is you are removing some part of the cornea. Keratectomy, ectomy, you are removing some part of the corneal tissue using an eczema laser to use uh, to do this procedure okay the wavelength over here is 193 nanometers please remember this can be frequently asked and it can correct up to minus 5 diopters of myopia okay what you do is you can see from this picture that the laser beam is focused onto the epithelium of the cornea and it is ablated this cornea is removed and this results in uh, correction of the refractive error up to minus 5 diopter sphere. However, the disadvantage of this is that it is very painful because we know that the epithelium is rich in nerve fibers. Epithelium has very high nerve fibers. So, it is a very painful condition that can last for a very long time after the surgery. Also, if you damage the Bowman's membrane, we know that it does not regenerate. So, it can result in corneal scarring. These are the two drawbacks of this procedure. So, now the latest procedure is our LASIK. We all are familiar with this word. So, LASIK is laser assisted in situ keratomyliosis. Kindly try to memorize this full form. Okay, it is laser assisted in situ keratomyliosis. The word keratomyliosis means change in the corneal shape, change in shape of cornea. Okay, it is a gold standard procedure and it can correct myopia up to minus 10 diopters. It's an average. Sometimes it can correct up to minus 12 diopters also. Hypermetropia up to plus 5 diopters and astigmatism plus or minus 3.5 diopters so 10 5 and 3.5 okay here also the most complicated and sophisticated eczema laser is used now let's look at this procedure what is done over here 
is that the keratome cuts the cornea below the Bowman's membrane. So here you are eliminating the issue of pain as well as scarring. You go beneath the Bowman's membrane and you can see in this picture that a flap is created. This flap over here, it is lifted uh, but it is attached to the cornea on one side and it is lifted from the other side. The flap containing epithelium and Bowman's membrane is removed. So the next layer, that's nothing but your stroma is exposed. Okay, once the flap is uh, reflected back and this eczema laser is used to uh, ablate the cornea once the ablation of the cornea uh, corneal stroma is finished see the flap is placed back into its position and it heals back naturally so we have seen that it is eliminating the pain and corneal scarring okay is this procedure clear first you create a flap and you ablate the stroma the stromal thickness, how much it should be ablated is decided based upon the refractive error of the patient. Based on number one, the refractive error and number two, the corneal thickness. Okay, corneal thickness. These two decide how much of the stroma you are going to ablate. Okay, then again the flap is placed back in its anatomical position. Now that we have spoken about corneal thickness, we have to mention about this procedure called pachymetry which lets us allow, uh, allows us to measure the corneal thickness. Pachy means thickness, so we measure the corneal thickness with this pachymetry. It is the single most important uh, factor which decides how much you are going to ablate in the LASIK. So there is a uh, stipulated amount of uh, thickness that is required so that you can call a patient eligible for LASIK surgery. However, an absolute contraindication for LASIK surgery is keratoconus. Please remember this, it can be asked an absolute contraindication. Straight away you reject it if the patient has keratoconus. Hello everyone, this is Dr. Sai Suguna, your mentor for ophthalmology at MediCoab. Now, thanks for watching the video. Now we have put such videos all together in our ophthalmology app. The trial version you can download from the link over here or in the description box below.